Hi everybody, my name is Dennis. Today we're going to talk about installing a Ryzen 2 second generation 2400G processor. Simple, we're going to do it quickly, and then we're going to move on to something else. So, stay tuned, think about subscribing, think about hitting that like, hit that bell for future notifications. Hope you like it. So the way to know the direction that the CPU is going to go, you want to look for that little arrow. Now it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it right there. If you look real careful, you can see the actual triangle. Okay, so if that doesn't help you or you're not sure, look for the handle. It goes from here down, and on the bottom part where the handle releases, you just go across from that, and that's where it's going to be. So that's where you're orientation is going to point you toward. So this is our CPU. It's an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G second generation Ryzen. And it just comes in this nice little box. Nothing fancy. And we'll just get that out. Now inside your box you're going to get the AMD installation instructions. It's going to tell you how to install them for all your different sockets. Which we don't need. And then of course we're going to get it out of the package and there's nothing much to it you're just going to find where it opens which is usually just a little let's see if I can get that here for you a little corner there you're just going to pry that open be careful not to spill it out of the case now when you remove it from the case make sure you take it from the edges okay pick it up from the edges and one of these ways is going to let you so yeah get rid of that Okay, so we're just going to hold by edges, not touch it. There's the back side. And now we're just going to put it in. So like I said before, you can see that little triangle, that gold triangle right here. And you know that it's going to be on your board here. So first thing you have to do is lift this up. Okay, so just push that down. It's going to come up. All right, and then you're going to take your processor and you're just going to set it in there. And it should fit down just nicely. And then you're just going to take that little handle and you're going to pull it back down. And it's just going to nicely pop underneath. And that's all there is to it. So, of course, now you're just going to have to put your um, cooler on. So when you get your Ryzen... It comes in a package, kind of like that, just opens up, and it's got the little plastic cover over it. So you're just going to remove that, throw it back in the box, and you've got your cooler here. Now, if you're going to be overclocking, you might want to consider getting a more high-end cooler. Now, I'm not going to be overclocking this, at least not yet. And if I decide to do that later on, then I'll get a better cooler. So it comes with a four-pin connector which is pretty nice and when you look at it it's already pre-applied with your thermal paste so that way when you put it on the only thing you have to do next is when you look at your motherboard and I'm going to show you this right now you've got these brackets okay so these brackets have to come off so it's just a matter of unscrew these in the corners here take them off and then you're ready to put your stealth wraith cooler on Okay, so we're gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so that comes off. And you're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And what you'll notice is it has this little four pins. There's two here, two on the other side, popping up. And that's what you're going to screw into. Okay, so take the brackets off. You can save them in case you need them later on, but you probably won't. So now you'll notice that the screws are longer this way than they are this way. So make sure when you take your cooler and you're going to put it on that you're facing that same direction as I am holding it now. 
And of course, you're going to pop it down onto those screws. Okay, so this one mounts or installs, whatever you want to call it, much the same as an Intel cooler. Okay, the only difference is with an Intel cooler, you're going to pop it down, just push it from the corners. In this case, you're simply screwing it back in place the exact same way as you remove the other one, those little brackets. Now, the other thing I just want to point out is I've done this one and I've done the other one on the other side to tighten it down and that kind of that applies an even pressure going down and then when you do the other two screws um, it's not going to go onto your board so tight you're not going to have to force it quite as much and so far my experience uh, from the original Ryzen to this one um, goes on a lot easier and it doesn't take as much force for it to secure it to the motherboard Thereby, I don't feel like I'm trying to damage my board by putting it on, which was a bit of an issue with the original. And you'll hear a bit of, uh, you'll hear a little bit of grinding. That's just the spring, so don't worry about it. Okay, so this is the last corner. And when it's done, you'll know because it'll just stop moving. It just won't turn anymore. So you don't have to, like, try and put all kinds of extra pressure on it or anything like that then just go around and just check the corners to make sure that uh, you didn't miss anything just double check that uh, they're tight because you want to have that uh, tight seal between your CPU and your cooler otherwise your thermals aren't going to be quite as good as they could be no the only other thing left is to plug in your CPU fan so like I said you got a four pin and uh, just plug it in. So on this motherboard, it just happens to be right here. So take that, make sure you see that little divot. Okay, so that divot has to line up on your motherboard, just like that. So if you line it up right, so just get it like that, and then you're just gonna push down. Okay, you don't have to push too hard. Once it's on, it's on. Now something you'll notice is we got a little bit of looseness of the cable. So all you can do is just twist tie that and just tie it down, okay, and then that'll get it out of the way, which is kind of important when you're doing it on a mini ITX, because you want to get as many of those cables out of the way so they don't interfere with anything else you're trying to do. Okay, so all I did is I put the twist tie around here, and then I just tighten it up a little bit. Now be careful because you don't want to uh, pull it from the pin again, but if you did, it'll plug back in, and then we're just going to cut that off. And then that'll nicely tuck out of the way, and then you'll be able to have access to your 24 pin and everything else, and memory and all that, because your memory's right here, so you have to make sure you tuck this away, otherwise it's just going to interfere with everything. Okay, so now you can see where it's all tucked away, just nice underneath here. It's not interfering with your fan or anything like that. And now you can put in your memory, and then your board will be prepped and ready to go. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I appreciate you dropping by. Don't, hit that, don't forget to hit that subscribe, hit that like, and hit that bell for future notifications of more videos coming up.